I'll be right back. Nice to see you all. There we go. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. We're going to have uh, all six of us, Barry. Uh, got RSVPs from five. Five, okay. And we're going to try and manage this as best we can so that we're not on too late with res to respect everyone's schedule. Um, Cause I know not everyone has unlimited schedule uh, this evening. And I, I guess I also want to acknowledge it's seven o'clock. At least I have it at seven o'clock. Yep. And we do have a quorum. And I do not show any guests yet. Oh, we just had a fifth There's person join. Betsy? Betsy. Yeah. Uh, did I jinx us? <laughs> <laughs> well, I blessed us. That's what I meant to say. I yes. Us. Hi, Betsy. Hello, Terry. How are you? I'm well. <laughs> No night, Gary and Titian. Oh, you bet. Hi, Betsy. No, no, I, I'm your special guest today. You are. You're always a special guest. <laughs> Thank you, Nona. Well, with respect to the time, I'm going to, it is seven o'clock, uh, uh, which is an on time start. So I'm going to get us started. And obviously, um, uh, you know, we welcome any additional committee members or um, community members to join, but we do have a quorum and we're just gonna begin. I'll note that we are recording. Um, I think it's a best practice that that the town is trying to 
uh, observe going forward to make our meeting more publicly available to folks, um, even if they can't join us uh, uh, in the moment. So I also want to acknowledge, it looks like uh, John Richards is joined. Thank you, John. Um, it's great to have uh, council uh, participating as well. Um, okay, uh, just diving into the, uh, the agenda, uh, getting us started, I wanted to um, uh, acknowledge, I already did, the committee members that have joined, we have the quorum, um, uh, open it up for any oral communications on matters that, that were not agendized. Any comments at all from committee members or the public? No? Okay, great. Uh, Terry? Oh, yeah, sure, Gary. See, Greg's not here, but I would want to congratulate him because it appears he has made it on onto the council. Yeah. Unless there's four or 500 uh, oh, still yeah. hanging out there somewhere. The man is joining. And here he is, yeah. You can you can congratulate him in person. Oh, he's hiding, though. Maybe oh, he's, he's hiding, the... yeah. Hi, Craig. Congratulations Hello. on your election. That yeah, well, you know, they <clears throat> still have like 41,000 ballots to count in San Mateo. Yeah, hey, really? yeah. unless there's uh, four or 500 more votes, votes in Portola Valley, I'd say you're in good shape. Yeah, I, yeah, I think at this point it probably is unlikely to change, but, uh, you know. So, so anyway, thank you. Yeah, yeah. congratulations okay. from everyone. It's an honor to have a current and a prospective council member on yeah, at the same should, time. John, you had a comment? You should congratulate me too for having finished. <laughs> yeah, that's, yes, many, probably many years my, of service. Probably my last meeting with you guys. So Thank you, John, as yeah. well. Thank you for all those years, John. Yeah, yeah I guess this will be my last yeah. meeting with you as well. <laughs> well, until you become the council committee member representative. Yeah. Well, we'll see who, who I get assigned. <laughs> Well, we would only be so lucky. Congratulations, Craig. Thanks. You know, I also wanted to acknowledge, um, I just happened upon this, and those of you, others may already know this, but Howard Young, our director of public works, is in his 20th year of service to the town. Um, and uh, he's obviously been a very visible um, uh, colleague to um the council and to the staff and to volunteer committees and whatnot. And he's not joining us tonight, but I, I also thought since we were in a congratulatory mood um, uh, for John and for Craig and others, I thought it wouldn't be inappropriate to acknowledge that he's in his 20th year. And he did not bring that up. It just came up. Uh, and uh, I think appreciating staff is never a bad thing, especially one that has been so supportive and helpful. Right. Um, any other comments uh, in terms of uh, uh, oral communications? Great, let's keep moving. Um, the next agenda item is the approval of minutes. As usual, thank you. Um, uh, thank you so much for uh, drafting them, um, Nona. Uh, and in this case, I might note that she drafted them quickly enough that we were able to post them publicly in even in draft form for the community to look at. Um, but now is our chance, uh, if anyone has any corrections or clarifications to raise them, any? Um, if not, I'd love a motion to approve them as drafted. I move to approve them as drafted. Thank you, Tessian. Um, a second? Second here. Thank you, Gary. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions or? Uh, okay, great. I'll Thank abstain. you. <clears throat> Thank you, Nona. Okay. Oh my goodness, we're speeding along. Um, <laughs> in the category of old business, um, uh, I put in here a quick, hopefully a quick conversation about uh, the committee charter uh, and the reason we wanted to raise it uh, is because we wanted to address something that we've referenced in prior conversations, but I, I'd like to propose, um, and this isn't a motion yet, but I just want to explain why it's here. I'd like to propose that 
given the committee charter that we've looked at at prior meetings, which is in the packet, um, and the um, broad references to many potential responsibilities, including but not exclusively acquisition advisory, uh, that we consider uh, whether this committee and the community would feel comfortable requesting or recommending to the town council. And I apologize, John and Craig, if I'm not saying this correctly, but I think you'll get the gist of what I'm, I'm trying to suggest, that the town council consider officially changing the name uh, of the committee just to the open space committee um, and away from the acquisition advisory committee. And it's not because we don't accept and uh, appreciate the responsibility of working with the community on acquisition advisory, but simply that at least if you were to read the charter, it seems like an incomplete uh, and limiting qualification of the scope of interest from the community uh, and the allowable scope uh, of the charter uh, to limit the name of the committee in that way. Um, so I hope that background is clear and I hope the context makes sense, but I will pause and entertain comments from my colleagues. Uh, well, actually, I think Craig is gonna, or John is gonna correct me and say, I'll, I, I've stated what I think the item is, and maybe we could begin with inviting comments from the community if they have any, and then we'll close those comments and then go to committee discussion. Uh, I see Dave has raised his hand. David, would you like to comment? Oh, hopefully. David? Uh, can you hear me now? We can. Oh, good. Every meeting has a different protocol for unmuting. So I think it'd be great because obviously, especially the Ford field and everything else is going on, um, acquiring new open space is only one of a number of priorities for figuring out how we manage our open space. So I'm I'm all for it. Thanks. Thank you, David. Any other comments, Betsy? I'm neutral. Um, I'm I'm not against it, um, but I would just want to make sure that there were not that we understood um, any unintended consequences in the messaging. Um, I, I appreciate that the committee, particularly with the um, reserve amount that we have in our funds, there's a, a relatively long hiatus between acquisition events and or donation events. Um, and, and yet the role of this committee um, in targeting future acquisitions and protection is very strong. So I would just wanna make sure that that was still a preeminent thrust um, and that didn't get watered down um, to maintenance only yeah, yeah. Thank or, you. or to in an, in an environment where we could be looking at diminishing land assets um, that are protective, that, that the protective um, value is very much there front and center. Thank you, Betsy. Um, any other comments from uh, the community before we close those comments? Okay, why don't we close those comments and open it up to a uh, comment from the committee? Thoughts? Yeah. Uh, Gary? Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, we're known far and wide as the Open Space Committee, and I think it it's time to, to make that change. And bringing up something with that, that Betsy was worried about, um, we still have the charter. The charter makes uh, very clear what our duties are. So we're not really going to lose anything by uh, <clears throat> recovering from this um, rather large mouthful that I can never remember <laughs> after 20 years or so on this committee. So I'm all in favor of Open Space Committee. Thank you, Gary. Uh, Nona, you also raised your hand. Yeah, I have a question about why the committee is called the Acquisition Advisory Committee, and if that has always been the name, 
Um, so that's my first question, or, or whether the name was changed at some point from the Open Space Committee. And then the second question I had is, if there is a discrepancy between the name of the committee and the functions of the committee, one could also change the functions of the committee so that the name is more appropriate. And it's certainly clear that we do not fulfill all of the uh, the functions that are listed. For example, we don't do the big fundraising event every year. So uh, if we were to change the name of the committee, I would also recommend changing the list of functions, at least to, to uh, remove what we don't actually do. Thank you, Nona. Um, may, uh, Tissian, a actually, um, before we go to Tissian, does anyone uh, on this call, some of whom are veterans of this committee and of the council, care to chime in about the any insight into the current naming? I mean, the name's been the Open Space Acquisition acquisition committee for as long as I can remember. And I think, you know, it was there to advise the council on open space um, acquisition, you know, purchases and donations. Yeah, I, um, I think Craig's correct. I don't, I think it's been that way from the beginning. Like things have evolved. I think Gary's also right that it's been accepted by most people as just the open space committee. So. Yeah, that's, that's my recollection too, from the very beginning. And it was probably uh, named that way to constrain us to uh, to not go beyond uh, acquisition advisory and to and to other things. But we've managed to get into other things as the as the years have gone by. I think our charter is still a pretty good shape. Okay. Um, thank you for that uh, initial response. Um, may I uh, uh, call on Tissian? She raised her hand. Thanks, Terry. Um, I agree with Nona about uh, someone who's relatively recent on the committee. I've been confused about what the committee um, was a sort of a purview was. And so I like the idea of revisiting the charter, maybe not changing it a lot, but um, removing the things we're not doing and maybe making that charter available online. I, I think that also other people's uh, people in the community have different ideas about what the committee is supposed to be able to do. And so as we refined it, maybe we'd think about like that having a public face. Um, I also, because I was really baffled at the last meeting by the, um, the utility users task, tax issue. I got really curious about that and I looked at the, the different um, things that have been put to the to a vote and the way that that language looks. And there's this language of open space purposes attached to that chunk of money that's accruing that is part of the sort of acquisition um, field that we're in. And so not, I, uh, open space purposes is equally vague and maybe not helpful, but I, I, I wonder if we could sort of bring that into the conversation, uh, right? Because there is this money earmarked and there, there's actually legislation that has passed that's related to this. Um, so I wanted to just sort of put that in the mix. Thank you, Tessia. I would say that the UUT um, is a separate sort of legal document and definition. So some of what you're referring to, you know, is, is really going back to the the, the language um, on the ballot, um, which, as in many of these things, was sort of vague in, in, in its intent. Um, I mean, I was pretty disappointed that we've started taking UT money um, for maintenance since we, you know, some some years back now, went to the council saying, you know, here's how we think it's reasonable to spend um, these reserve funds. Um, and this wasn't one of them. <laughs> so um, it feels like kind of an end run on Jeremy's part. It doesn't feel like it's really had much public discussion. Um, and I don't know where you guys came out on it in the last meeting, but, you know, I, I was sort of disappointed by the process, I have to say, at a minimum. That, that's why I got curious, and I, I don't think it has been determined finally that that money is being used, has it? No. 
Yeah. And so when we talk about that again, um, I, I agree with you, Craig, that that isn't necessarily right. And that's why I was curious about the purposes language and the difference between that and routine maintenance, which I think there's a big difference. And, and I think it'd be reasonable for this committee to, to basically open up that question and get public comment on it. I mean, maybe people are okay with it. I just don't think it's what we have traditionally wow. thought it was in the past. So I'm not saying right or wrong, but, but it doesn't feel like, you know, obviously we wrote up that document and at the time we pretty clearly didn't think that's what was going on. So, um, you know, it, it, it would be nice to at least give it a good public airing. I, I wanna suggest that there was a fair amount of debate on that topic um, at the last meeting when Jerry uh, Jeremy came and introduced it. Um, I, by no means does the commentary this evening suggest that that's, that's a resolved issue. So it's clearly something we can agendize uh, again and, and tackle again. I, I believe just to be, uh, to uh, follow up on Tissian's question slash comment um, that the council explicitly uh, punted that part of the budget recommendation um, uh, for this year um, uh, pending, uh, you know, the very discussion uh, and maybe perhaps clarification that that you all are suggesting um, uh, for further clarification. Um, just with the community and this committee uh, so that we can perhaps go back and provide additional, more comprehensive input to council as they as they consider that very question. Um, so, so, they, so they punted it to the next council? <laughs> well, I mean, or to the current council, but um, <laughs> if, if we get to it. It's your, it's your baby now. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, but I, I I would posit um, because I think these are good questions, very good questions, both specifically uh, the use of these funds as well as uh, a more wholesome update on the charter. That those are both worthy projects. That one of the suggestions I'm gonna, I'm going to have, or I'm inclined to suggest. This is not the suggestion, but I just want to share the idea. Um, is that we consider. Um, streamlining the, the committee name um, and uh, appointing a subset of the committee. And if it's appropriate or acceptable, we could invite non a non-committee member or a community member to help um, make a recommendation on um, uh, cleaning up the charter, not, not uh, adding new things to the charter, but cleaning up parts of the charter that don't seem uh, applicable uh, currently. Um, uh, and that maybe instead of trying to do that as a group in this forum, uh, we ask a subgroup to work on that and then come back uh, and share uh, that work with, with the committee and the community. Well, you can certainly have members of the public join you because I, mean, I mean, it's a subcommittee, so you're not required to meet in public. But I mean, the nice thing is members of the public that aren't members of the committee, you're not gonna go over the quorum. So you can certainly do that part of it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, once it comes back to the committee itself, then if you have to vote on something, you're limited to the actual members. Of course. Yeah, of course. So that's, I, I think that's, that's always a good thing. Um, uh, but I think this committee, the community has demonstrated both their interest and their thoughtfulness in helping us think through important questions uh, 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 from the community, for the community. And I think this is a, a perfect example of something that we wouldn't need to limit just to the committee. And if there are community members that would be willing to, or a community member willing to, to join a or some committee members, uh, that that could be really helpful. Uh, Nona, you raised your hand. Yeah, I, I have one concern about that, which is that if we are losing Craig to the town council, um, which we are delighted in some respect to be doing, um, 
then we're going to have an even smaller committee unless we recruit new members. And one of the things that I think the public has really urged us to do is to do more. Uh, and I don't know that we can do more. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't want to see the charter rewritten so that we have even more on our plate um, when we don't really have a, a, a full committee. So uh, uh, if this is going to take place, I think there has to be a real push to get more committee members. And I think that's a higher priority, actually, uh, than bringing community members into drafting a new charter for the committee. Okay, I, I will say that I, I wasn't necessarily proposing drafting a new charter, um, but I technically it is if we delete things that are not applicable. Um, but I, my concern is, is that we put some things ahead of doing things that don't seem super controversial. Uh, and that more potential progress uh, just gets put out uh, for further years, not months, um, when I'm not sure. But if it, if it is controversial, then I, that's fine with me. Uh, uh, this is not my committee. It's the community's committee and, and the committee's committee and ultimately the town, town council's um, you know, decision making. Um, I'm fine if we don't feel comfortable uh, with recommending uh, a change to the name without a change to the charter, without additional committee members to discuss further both of those things. Um, but I just, you know, am putting out there the notion that if it's not super controversial to simplify the name of the committee, um, uh, that that seems like something we've discussed before, um, seems consistent, not inconsistent with the charter uh, as it exists, uh, that that was the real reason for putting this on the agenda first. And I think it's a great point that we also consider um, the charter itself, um, not so much to you know, necessarily add to it or change it, but really to uh, to edit out things that are clearly not applicable, which seems to me a lower bar of uh, uh, than you know to try and rewrite the charter. And trust me, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying any trickery here. I'm just trying to to uh, you know, see if we can make baby steps that are non-controversial, um, that uh, you know, simplify and clarify what we're doing, what the community seems to be interested in having us do, and what will hopefully be continue to be helpful to the council and the community. That's my only intent. Other comments? I think it's a great idea, Carrie. Just from I think it's a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of discussion that needs to happen around all these topics you've talked about, and I, I think this is a, a like you say a sort of a baby step way to start. It makes a lot of sense and without a, a huge committee. Hopefully, you'll be able to get some more members, but uh, no point in stopping that. Thank you, John. The other thing I would add is the nice thing is you know we're going to be on the hunt, so to speak, for new planning commissioners and the new ASEC commissioner. Um, I think the current plan is to have a council meeting sometime early January to basically do interviews and then make a decision. So, you know, maybe we can piggyback off, you know, looking for people for different, you know, positions and just get, get as big a pool as we can and then look at that pool and see if there's anybody who, isn't well they could even be a planning commissioner obviously and and be on the open space committee at the same time um but you know I, I think we could actually see if we could find some people that you know that have stepped forward as an interest in doing some public service and are flexible to the ways that they might be able to serve 
Yeah. Thank you, Craig. Other comments, folks? Betsy. Um, I, I hope that's okay. I know that Betsy's not a committee member, but. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. If I, 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 since it was a little quiet, I was. Yeah, please. But I'm happy to go you know, wait my turn. No, please. Um, I was just going to volunteer if you, if it would be of help. Um, I sometimes go visit Nancy Lund occasionally in her, um, on her Thursday office hours at, at the library. And I wonder if she might have in her treasure trove there some history about the formation of this committee. Um, so I could at least bring in some material that might help you think about the origins of the name. And as we let go, as, as you consider letting go of pieces of the charter and incorporating others that we uh, provide some rationale for it. If, the, if it would serve you. But I mean, if you want to go forward from where we are today without um, the past, I don't, I'm not trying to spend your time and mine needlessly. Well, uh, Gary, something uh, popped into my mind from a million years ago. Thank you, Betsy. Um, it, it was called the Open Space Committee um, before it was reinstituted. You know, it had gone defunct for a number of years mm -hmm. in the 90s. Um, the name, uh, I, I think it was uh, because we were actually in the process of buying land in those days, this uh, notion and the word acquisition came up, Open Space Acquisition Committee. And the council added advisory because they didn't want our committee just going out willy-nilly buying property. So I think it was there for a guardrail. That's, that's my recollection anyway. And, and if I could, I mean, this is, all, I'd like to add on to that because I think Gary's right on. And I also think that it was um, product differentiation because we had conservation and trails so that it, there was some clarity and distinction of purpose. But I'm willing to run that down if, um, if the background needs to be more, more uh, better footnoted. Thank you. I I would just observe, listening to this conversation, that um, Betsy's probably too polite to nominate herself, but I'm not too uh, uh, embarrassed to ask Betsy in public um, if she'd be willing to work with, say, me um, on the... Um, uh, maybe on the researching and thinking about how we might uh, edit the the charter itself, not to change its purpose or meaning, but to maybe clean up uh, parts of it that uh, are non-controversially uh, uh, not applicable uh, anymore with the benefit of the historic context that she's referencing. Um, and, and that at least with respect to updating and cleaning up the charter, which to me uh, is obviously a very related part to this discussion, but not necessarily the same thing as simplifying and cleaning up the committee name, uh, that, that we keep those two topics separate, even though they're obviously related. Um, and see if the committee is willing and the community is willing to entertain this notion of, of simplifying the name of the committee to open space committee um, and making that recommendation to the council. Uh, and as a related but separate matter, uh, have a subcommittee of myself and I'm gonna say it again, Betsy, uh, and anyone else who wants to join to do a little bit of homework and come back to the committee with, um, with any recommendations or suggestions for how to clean up the charter. And by the way, this was a, a request or suggestion from the committee itself, right? To, to observe that there are parts of the charter that may not be um, so applicable, whether it be throwing big fundraising events or whatnot, um, and, and come back to this committee and, and see if we can propose some, some edits that they feel are appropriate to the charter. Uh, how does that land? Betsy? 
Um, thank you. Thank you. That was um, so, so polite and kind in, in, in the offer. And if it meets with the approval of the rest of the committee, um, I'd be happy to work with you, Terry. Thank you for the offer. Thanks, Betsy. Um, before we move on, I, Dave, David has raised his hand. I'm happy to hear what he has to say. I think we are happy to. David? Oh, sure. I was just looking through the uh, laser fish these are fish uh, archives on the town site that you can get to under the archive search. And there's quite a lot of interesting material about the committee, the formation, what it was for, right. uh, John Silver and people saying it should be people who can raise money um, to buy stuff. So I think it's it's quite a hoot, really. So it, and Nancy would be the expert overall. But uh, if you're interested in the, the history and trying to figure out where we go from here, there's a lot of good reading that's right online that you can you can dig up. Fantastic. I, I want to be clear. I apologize, Dave. If you're you're raising your hand without raising your hand, wanting to be on this subcommittee, working with Betsy and myself, you're more than welcome and invited. Um, so if 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 you want to work on this together with us, I I don't want to like make this invitation on behalf of Betsy. But I know I welcome uh, the opportunity to to work with you as well, if that also saves some of the bandwidth of my other committee members to be available to focus on other things. Oh uh, yeah, thanks thanks for the offer, but I'm happy to help out in the background. I think. Okay, um, Tissian. Terry, as I listen, I'm persuaded that disaggregating the name change from the charter probably makes sense for us because of the pace of things in the world. And since we are functionally the open space committee already, and I think that that the idea of lining up the name with, with everybody's expectations probably makes sense. So I just thought I'd put that out there, but I think, I think both things are, are good to do, but separating them makes sense to me as well. Thank you so much. Um, any other comments? Nona, Gary, Craig. Go for it. Okay, I'm gonna I I'm gonna uh move. I'm gonna move that this committee uh, make a recommendation to the council to simplify the name of the committee uh simply to open space committee um from its current name. Uh, and uh, let me stop there, um, and then I'll I'll comment on the charter separately. Can I get a second? Tissian seconding, um, and we do have a quorum. We had a couple of seconds. That's good news. Um, can we take a, a vote of show of hands of committee members who agree with that notion? Oh my goodness, unanimous. Thank you, um, thank you, uh, folks, for considering that. And thank you for the unanimous recommendation to put that to council. I would secondly um, uh, recommend that we establish a subcommittee, and I'm happy to uh, be part of the, the initial subcommittee, along with Betsy, who uh, I'd like to recommend be invited um, to begin work on uh, reviewing some of the additional history and context so that we can make an informed recommendation of how to uh, modestly edit the charter, not to change its meaning, uh, but to make it hopefully more aligned with uh, the current contemporary um, expectations of the community, uh, act expectations and actions of the community and the committee itself. Um, so I'd like to, I don't know if we have to make a, well, we probably should make a, a motion to establish that subcommittee. Um, so I'd like to make that motion. Any second? Tissian seconding. Great. Um, can I uh, put that to vote? All those in favor of forming this project and committee? Thank you. And unanimous again. Oh my gosh, we're on a roll. Thank you. Let me say thank you, Betsy. Um, much appreciated. And thank you, committee, for supporting um, that uh, idea. We'll obviously be back to you before any uh, further action is suggested. Okay, um, moving on to new business. 
Uh, the first item in new business uh, is potential regular meeting schedule. I'm guilty of putting that on there. So let me please explain uh, the thought process. Um, I, I know I haven't been on the committee as long as, as many or most of you, um, but during my time as chair, um, uh, you know, I've noticed issues come up, uh, uh, important issues come up that, that we've scrambled, frankly, to uh, be responsive to, um, primarily because we tend to set meetings up uh, as needed, which makes a lot of sense. Um, that being said, because we're updating the name of the committee to be more consistent with the charter, and because my sense is that the interest of the community uh, in open space is broader than just acquisition, which introduces the reality, not just the probability, that more questions have come up uh, from time to time about various aspects of open space in our community. That from a just pragmatic scheduling matter, uh, I believe it would be easier for the community and for the committee if we were, were for example, to set a regular schedule of uh, committee meetings, say the third Tuesday uh, at 7 p.m. of every other month as a starting place. Um, and if we needed more meetings, we could add them. And if we didn't need a meeting, we could simply cancel them, which has been my practice as committee chair on other committees that do have standing meetings when they're not required. Um, my feeling is that that would make it easier for the community to have touch points about when uh, questions uh, or matters could be taken up with the committee on a more organized, visible, anticipatable schedule. And it would be easier for committee members uh, to plan themselves instead of getting doodle polls from me out of the blue or from whoever the committee chair is um, with you know scheduling challenges. I'm not saying I think this is perfect, and I'm not saying that this is for the convenience of the chair or for the committee itself. I, I view this as an opportunity for the community and the committee to have a more visible, organized, intentional plan which can be adjusted uh, more frequently or less frequently as needed. So that's the spirit of the suggestion. Um, I'll pause for a second and first begin by seeing if the community has any feedback or comment, and then we'll close that and, and come back to the committee. Uh, does the community have any comments about that? Betsy? I'm quite positive about this because I think it will build um, expectations and more public participation because expectations are set and calendars are known. So I, I, I very much support it. And I like the every other month approach. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Betsy. Other comments, John? Yeah, I mean, I think this is probably something of an indication of the, of the changing focus of the committee over the years. And, uh, probably makes a lot of sense. Thank you, John. Other comments from the community before we turn to the committee? Okay, I'm gonna close community comment and turn to the committee. Have at it, committee. I'm sitting down, so if you're gonna take a shot, I won't fall too far. <laughs> no, everyone wants to take a swing, Nona first. And I, I'm totally in support of this. I, I think there's nothing more chaotic than sort of watching for a doodle poll and trying to figure out when it's going to get settled and, and then it not doesn't get settled. So this is a, this simplifies things a lot. I, I was going to say that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. And, and I, and I agree with those. In addition, that's it, follow through is sometimes difficult. You, uh, somebody signs up or something and it's easily to forget it because maybe three, four or five months ago. So I, I think uh, in every other month we'll solve that problem. At least I hope so. So I'm all in favor of it. Thank you. And Craig's sitting there quietly saying, it's your problem, 
boys and girls. I'm moving to the council. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> but I mean, I generally agree with the comments that have made. I, I think making it more predictable for the public um, and just giving you guys a regular time to meet and move things along is, is important. So, I mean, it sounds reasonable to me. Great. Okay. In light of the feedback from the community and from committee colleagues, I'm going to take a swing and say, and make a recommendation or a motion um, that the that this committee recommend to the council that we um, set up a schedule of meetings every other month. So this would be a beginning month, and we would not meet again until January, I think, unless circumstances uh, necessitate something sooner. And I've looked at the calendar uh, for the town, and I've also looked at our history of doodle polls, um, at least for this group. Uh, and that's why I suggested the third Tuesday uh, of each month. Um, and I'm not suggesting that that's always going to be perfect for everybody. Um, but I think as a, a starting place, that's what I'd like to, re like to recommend. Um, uh, for this committee. So I'll pause um, and see if I can get a second. Tissian, thank you. Um, okay, so uh, can I put that to vote from the committee? All those in favor? Oh, brilliant. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. That's a unanimous vote. I hesitate to continue because we're being so successful right now but we will continue. Thank you, by the way, to the community and the committee for considering that. Um, so the next item under new business, the next few items, um, they're meaty topics uh, and they were put on here to begin a conversation, not to complete a conversation. And I must confess that I put them on here um, in response to committee and colleague feedback and interest. Um, and in the uh, 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 committee package uh, on 5B, open space parcels review, there are uh, materials, uh, including a like an Excel spreadsheet list of uh, open space or open space related parcels, some of them are road remnants and whatnot, um, that uh, was put together a few years ago for, I think, a different purpose, but I think helps illustrate uh, the type of parcels that are open space or are related to open space that might be of interest to the community and this committee. Um, uh, that a, a town related group um, helped put together. Um, that's why it's in in our materials. And I wanted to acknowledge that um, that the Ford Field situation uh, raised, I think, in the community's mind and certainly in this committee's mind, what are the other parcels that we should be paying close attention to um, that uh, that we could look at to uh, make sure that we're current on any potential issues related to those more significant parcels. I'm not just going to say larger because a smaller parcel could could be strategically important, like the frog pond, for example. Um, and uh, I don't know if this is the kind of work that, again, a subcommittee that is hard to organize with such a small committee right now, I want to acknowledge, uh, could think about digging into not in totality, but maybe at, at least um, to identify the handful of highest priorities, which I don't think would be super hard, uh, and then maybe working sequentially through um, uh, to strive to prepare for the committee and the community uh, to address maybe one parcel at a time at upcoming meetings. So that was kind of the notion of why it is on here. Um, it's not something I think that necessarily requires, um, you know, immediate action other than the notion that we consider um, that this 
is a fundamental opportunity for this committee and the community to collaborate on um, proactively rather than reactively, which is a little bit of what it felt like happened with the Ford Field situation. So it's an attempt to try and be more proactive. Um, I'll pause for a second uh, and uh, maybe again, see if the community has any questions or comments about that notion. Um, and then we'll come back to the, the committee. Uh, John? Yeah, I, interesting subject. I mean, it's really um, uh, one with, uh, it's had, there's been a fair amount of discussion in, along these lines in several um, other committees. I'm known as on the conservation committee has put a fair amount of time in on it. And so I think this map you're referring to was originally set up for housing, potential housing sites. Um, at least partially. Um, maybe there's a way that this could be done as a joint effort with the conservation committee partially. Um, since they're, they're, they're a little better staffed at the moment, but um, you, might, you might be able to share manpower there and person power. Um, anyway, that was, that was all I really wanted to talk about. Thank you, John. Makes a lot of sense. This, this certainly was not a housing thing. I mean, we did this a long time ago. This was just to get a handle on how much open space we had in the town. Because we just, you know, it, it, it took a fair amount of digging to go back through the records to actually make sure we understood all the parcels because there's a bunch of odd parcels here and there. Thanks, Craig. Um, Betsy? I, I think it's a fabulous idea. And I want to take my hat off to Chip McIntosh, who I think was fairly instrumental in working with Jeremy um, in assembling this list originally. And then as I recall, um, he was he and Jeremy were making some efforts uh, to reach out to a number of the um, adjacent owners and talking about the possibility of, of um, acquisition. As I saw this on the um, agenda for tonight, I was enthused for two reasons. One is, um, one is, as you say, if we could just put all of our options on the table and try to find the best of the totality of all the options, it would be so much better than taking them on one at a time. And this, having looked through this at, in a different time and place, um, it didn't have the urgency as it does today. And some of these smaller spots, um, they could take perhaps one or two that could off, that importantly offload some of the denser um, pack uh, um, build outs that we are mm -hmm. looking at perhaps on Nathorse to just pick a, an, a recent example. So I really like it from that standpoint. And I also thought it might raise some money for the, for the town to put into the housing fund. Um, as I was imagining myself living next door to a vacant lot that I've enjoyed the town owning and paying, not having to pay tax bills on, I might look differently at that if I thought the town were gonna to build a house on it. And then my neighbors and I might get together and say, why don't we make the town an offer they can't refuse? So the town might end up with money instead of a, of a home site. Either way, it could advance our mission. So I, I, I just wanna say thank you for raising this again, because it looks different to me today than it did two years ago or three. Thanks, Betsy. Other comments from the committee or community? Uh, Tissian first. I was also really happy to, to see this list. And as I looked at it, I, um, I appreciated that there was sometimes information about if there are restrictions in the deed or restrictions implied by the way the town came into ownership, but it seems to me to, to really be useful in the in the context Betsy's talking about, especially. We we need much better 
uh, information about how what kinds of restrictions there may be on those on those properties. And so there's, it seems to me, some legal research to be done to make that document more robust as a record of like what 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 kinds of opportunities it might represent. Um, so I. I do not want to volunteer to do that research, and nor do nor am I necessarily the right person to because I I don't know the town um, as well maybe as others. But I, I would like to say that having seen this, that feels like something our committee would really benefit from having that information. Um, and I would be part of trying to figure out how to do it, but somebody else would have to lead me because I I don't feel um, well positioned. Thanks, TCM. No, no, you raised your hand too. Uh, yeah, I just thought I would chime in from the Conservation Committee perspective, which has worked with this list for many years. Um, and some years ago, uh, we, we initiated a partnership, that is we from Conservation initiated a partnership with Open Space to prioritize the parcels, um, figure out what the maintenance needs were of the, the most valuable ones, and to potentially um, you know, sell, jettison, whatever, the ones that were were problems more than liabilities, more than assets. And so that is something that has been discussed in the past by this committee. And I think the committee was in favor of doing that. Um, so I guess all I would say is don't start from scratch. <laughs> start from a large body of work that's already been done. Yeah, I would also add that, you know, when we went through this before, I mean, almost all of the properties on this are not buildable. They were, you know, they were either donated for open space purposes specifically, or they were people who decided not to pay their property taxes and the town sort of inherited them. And the reason they stopped paying the property taxes on it was because they were, they considered it a worthless property. So, the, the approach we took back then was to see if we could raise some additional open space funds from adjacent property owners, um, both to, to make sure that somebody would maintain it and also to add to the funds. So I, I can see that. I think using it as sort of a housing alternative, I mean, maybe there's one or two things on there, but, but in general, it's, it's gonna be pretty thin pickings on that list because I've been through this list before. Um, I also think we gonna need to be a little careful, and, and maybe this is under the new charter, of basically converting open space to other uses. I mean, I, I find that pretty problematic. Um, you know, the Dorothy Ford Park um, is an example of something that in, still, to my mind, is a, is a pretty problematic. And it's part of the reason we tried to create a larger zoning so that we didn't explicitly use Dorothy Ford Park, but created a larger zoning. And hopefully in the next two years, we find some flexible way to not take open space. So I just think this committee needs to be really careful because, you know, you guys in theory are the champions of open space. You know, we've got the sports guys and there's champions of fields and, you know, you've got neighbors and they're champions in their neighborhood. Somebody's got to be a champion of open space. So if you guys start down the path of how can we get rid of open space, then <laughs> it, 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 it's worrisome to me. So I, I just wanted to add that to the mix. I mean, I know that you're not saying that specifically, but, but I do hope that this committee remains the champion of open space. Um, and that if we jettison space, we do it for open space purposes, not for other purposes like housing. Thank you, Craig. Any other comments from the committee? Uh, yeah, Terry, I, were you, is that what you were aiming at is to uh, taking a look at, at the grant deeds and see what the nature of them are and see if, seeing if they're bulletproof? Uh, I think that's what uh, Tissian was, was favoring that we do. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. I just, I wanted to, to make sure things are protected and to know what's not protected legally um because my understanding is that the ford field maybe was not as well protected as one might have thought legally i i, I 
And so that that was one motivation. I was I was going the direction towards you, Craig, not away from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I and I yeah, I didn't I didn't take it a, a different way. So yeah. And, and I, I want to point out that the agenda item says open space parcels review conservation protection options, not development options, not sale options, but conservation and protection options. So I I, I think a couple of people have have pointed out that that the charter of the of of the committee and the history of the committee is more oriented in that way it's not the open space sale committee it's yeah. the acquisition committee which is being updated right so i i think we're probably directionally in the same place um and i appreciate being reminded that this is not new work, um, but a long lived work that that not just this committee, but other committees have have been uh, focused on. Uh, and perhaps the point is that we need to reconsider how we can partner uh, with other committees in the community um, to uh, maybe revisit where there might be opportunities to revisit, um, you know, that that work. I feel like that that's what, what we're hearing from the community and colleagues. Nona? Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I, I was glad that you included the map as well, because one of the other components of the discussion that we had about this several years ago was um, some of those parcels that are unbuildable are actually occupied to some extent by the neighbors already. Um, and so that was part of the reason for thinking about selling them. Um, but before we get to that question, there was the issue that was, I, I think maybe Cherry, you raised it, in fact, was whether or not some of those parcels are corridors that should be maintained as part of the open space network that we have, not because they really serve a purpose to us as enjoyers of you know, open space, but because they may be wildlife corridors, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so, so maybe in that reassessment, you you consider not only sort of what is useful to us, but what is useful in some other sense that is conservation or open space related. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. And when we talked about this before, the other thing we looked at is possible trail connections. I mean, there is a list of things that when when we went through this last time um we wanted to consider for each parcel mm -hmm. and you know my, my biggest concern is that if we lose focus on this that the town manager doing his job of trying to reduce liability for the town is happy just to give this stuff away because from his point of view it's a liability and the more liability you can give away the better it is within that narrow um, band of just trying to reduce liability. So again, this is where I think the open space committee needs to be vigilant and make sure that if we do things with open space parcels, we do it with open space purposes in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, in the interests of uh, time, my instinct from hearing uh, the input from colleagues and community is that we're acknowledging that this is an important topic uh, that has been a uh, subject of attention uh, in the past. Um, and I do see a couple of new hands raised, um, but I'm just going to finish this thought that um, uh, that there may not be the capacity uh, to do a lot more new at the moment, but there seems to be fairly consistent uh, alignment about the importance of this work from a conservation protection perspective. Um, and that uh, it's probably a project or a process to return to when we're better staffed in collaboration with uh, other committees and or community members. That's kind of my takeaway from what I've heard. 
Um, but I also want to acknowledge that we have a couple of other community members that have raised their hand. I'm happy uh, briefly to hear from them um, before we move on to uh, the last uh, few items. So um, Rita, you had raised your hand. Uh, yes, um, my question is, you know, uh, we have a lot of residents over the years that had donated money uh, to specific open space projects. And I'm sure the town then received uh, some type of tax break and added that to their, you know, to the finances. You know, you have buckets of money. This money is for open space and this money is for roads or that people have donated. And perhaps in their, you know, the people that donated in their estates, they gave it an open space for, you know, as a donation. So I'm wondering if, you know, the town wrote that in their ledgers that this money is supposed to be for open space and open space either uh, purchased for that, with that money, can that land then be repurposed for anything other than open space? I mean, I agree with the wildlife corridors because they're coming through my house every night, but um, I, I'm, I'm wondering if, uh, if that could be looked into. And perhaps that would limit some of the reuse of some of the open space that's on that beautiful map. Thank yeah, you. I, I think that's already the case, Rita. I mean, the, the money that's donated goes into a special fund that's earmarked for open space acquisition. And the things that we've acquired are still open space. I mean, the, the larger issue, but, but this is you know, a, a, a larger issue in general is open space easements, et cetera, um, are only as good as the town government that supports them. I agree. Thank you, Frida. Uh, Christy also raised her hand earlier. Christy, did you have a comment? I wanted to make sure that I heard what Gary said um, or uh, regarding working with recreation, especially when we're looking at Dorothy Ford, uh, park open space has, I think some of these um, collaborations could be with trails, conservation, recreation, and ASCC. And I did want to bring to your attention that uh, I'm, I'm really concerned about Dorothy Ford Park. And I found out that uh, Los Altos max height on El Camino is 45 feet. And Los Altos first street max height is 35 feet. But with bonus density law, if we care about ASCC and light fill, um, they've been able to take their max 35 feet on first street and that went up to 63 feet with bonus density law. And with 45 feet has gone as high as 70 feet with bonus density law and SB 35. So this is what I'm concerned about. We may put a limit on the height, but the law takes, California law can take the height even more because it's 14 to 18 inches between rooms, you know, between uh, rooms just to get it done. And then you add another two feet for the, you know, you could do eight feet the minimum for a room, but maybe this developer wants to do 14 feet per room. Do you see how we, we get bigger and bigger? So I'm concerned about Dorothy Ford Park growing to be bigger and bigger. Thanks, Christy. Um, I'm going to take one more. Thank you, Christy. I'm going to take one more comment from Betsy, and then I'm going to suggest we move on because I don't think there's anything actionable uh, for tonight. But Betsy? Um, I, I, I first wanted to correct any misimpression that I, I imagine I left, and um, or at least I'm sensitive to um, not having been specific that when I was looking at this list of 30 four or 36 parcels, I was not talking about those parcels that are identified as, as open space um, that we have very much been protecting, including uh, the right of the road remnant um, in front of Frog Pond. So, so taking those aside 
And taking Christie's point in a different direction, because Fort Park, because the town owns, owns it, is not um, threatened by density um, law. And, and therefore, that makes, if we were to find you know, one or two projects amongst these parcels that are owned by the town, we have all of this control that we don't otherwise have. I, I sat in on the other several meetings where this list was raised and tabled in a conversation that took less time than we're taking tonight on it. And so just from the standpoint of the public, I don't feel yet adequately well informed enough to go, okay, none of this is buildable and let it go. I guess I would rather myself to settle my own curiosity and hopefulness um, taking the conservation committee's input, uh, any other input that other committees have to bear, and and then going after, say, the two or three properties that remain possibilities and, and looking at them um, more carefully than we have before. Duly noted. And that's Thank you for thank you for raising that, Betsy. That's that's why it's back on the agenda, um, uh, and I suspect we'll return to it uh, again as as often as we need to 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 get the comfort uh, level from the community and the committee uh, to a place that more of us feel more comforted that we're doing all that we collectively want and need to do from a conservation and protection perspective. It's clearly the spirit of why it's on, on the agenda. And I think it's clear from tonight's conversation that there's more work to be done by the committee, but also in collaboration with others. So I, I just want to acknowledge that, but I also don't want to spin um, tonight when it doesn't feel like we're prepared to um, on next steps. And I do want to cover uh, I want to acknowledge that D is really related to this one, to B, 5D is really related to 5B, but I don't want to miss the opportunity to talk uh, about 5C as well, um, which is where I'd like to go uh, right now, unless anyone strongly objects. Um, and let me explain why 5C is on here. Um, open space signage. Um, it's on here for the reasons listed after the hyphen. Um, that when we name and sign things, we value them. Uh, and when we value things, we're much more careful about what we do with them. That's why we name our children. That's why we name our trails. That's why we name our parks. Um, and even if we don't use open space in the same way that we may use trails or parks or fields, uh, I feel like I've learned over the last number of years, working with my colleagues here and working with our community, that we very strongly feel that we use and benefit from open space, not in the same way, but in a different way, but no less important way. Uh, and that if we name and sign better, not uh, you know atrociously, but appropriately, discreetly, um, our open space, um, that we all will become more aware of it, um, that it will help our mission to educate our community about the open space we have, where it is, and why or how we appreciate it, and that it is could be related to um, support, both community support, financial support, and other support of protecting and conserving and preserving and even acquiring more of it. Um, that's the reason it's on here. I also want to acknowledge that Christy uh, raised this uh, topic as um, one of potential interest, and I, I thought it was a very interesting point that she raised, um, so much so that it's on the agenda here. Uh, I'm, it's on the agenda not because I think neon signs like you see at Disneyland are appropriate for naming and signing our open space. Um, but it's on here as a discussion topic to potentially explore uh, if there is any kind of appropriate signage um, that would help with the charters, uh, our open space charter uh, that 
has things like awareness, education, and support as part of our opportunity and responsibility as a committee. So I'll pause. That is the reason this is on, on the agenda uh, and begin by seeing if there are any comments uh, from the community about this. Christy? Yeah, I'm in the housing element, there is an address and, and then they change the name often to Dorothy Ford Park, and then sometimes the address is used, but you're right, Dorothy Ford Park open space is not labeled really well. The first time I walked under those trees when I found out that this was our largest housing site, I found two plaques that I didn't know were there. So are we doing as good a job uh, letting people know where Dorothy Ford Park open space is because in discussions with my friends, they say, now where is that again? So there was, Nona really put together this nice map of all the open space. And I heard last June, a, a year ago, that this was gonna be sent to everyone's home in Portola Valley, which I was super excited about. Let's go see all our open space that we own. And it never came out to everybody. And I think it's a good use for new families coming to Portola Valley to realize if you don't live by Shady Trail and you live on the other side of town, well, where is Shady Trail? How do I get to it? I wanna walk on it. So I really think we do need to do a better job of, if we wanna protect our open space, people need to know where the open space is that we want to protect, so. Um, I guess the other thing is I was surprised to see the list back at 2017. It seems that this ad hoc housing committee was looking at this list quite closely and figured out they could use the land. So do we update our open space list on an annual basis? And I would challenge this committee to I was just so surprised it's 2022 and it was labeled 2017. So we definitely need updates, even if they don't change. But right now you could even list Dorothy Ford, what, what are you gonna say about it? I, I just think the paperwork is hidden and it needs to be brought out more and more. I wanna understand how it was bought and what percentage each you know, the deed, what did Tom Ford pay? What did the parcel tax for open space pay? You know, I had to look recently, what did the town pay for it? This should all be out in the open and it should come from this committee um, to, if you're gonna give up this land that was on a map forever, then show us why, every detail, show us why. Thanks, Christy. The town paid ninety thousand dollars for it. Did yeah. not donate. Just, just to be clear, people talk about it as a donation, and it was actually a purchase. Thank you, Christy. Thank you, Craig. Other comments or questions from the community? Thank you, Christy. Um, any comments or questions from the uh, committee? Yes, Tizian. So Terry, when, when I first joined the committee, we were talking about um, making a more robust website for um, the open spaces. And I actually volunteered at that point to think about writing up um, a description. And I, I went and saw, I found 140 Escobar and I like, figured out how to get there off the horse trail. And I found out also that the conservation committee had already done a lot of this work. It had beautiful descriptions of the, and I just sort of like, I got stalled when I found out that I didn't really understand what the brief was. Um, but I would, um, I feel like maybe I, I can pick that back up and I, I would appreciate some guidance maybe from this committee about since the conservation committee has already written these beautiful descriptions, 
maybe we talk to the conservation committee about using them to make websites for each. I don't know about signage for a lot of these places, but if we had descriptions, I think there's only a description of um, of the horse property by the town at this point on the open space, you know, in terms of robust descriptions, I think no one was taking thinking about taking pictures. So if we, I, I would be happy to do more work on um, having descriptions of the open spaces, which I think is a good way of, of claiming and naming those spaces without actually putting signs on physical places that people aren't necessarily gonna see. So I, I okay, um, would we talk to the conservation committee about using those descriptions um, and then think about getting them on the town? I, I honestly would love for someone to tell me sort of how to proceed because I would be happy to do some of that work, but I don't exactly know how to do it. Well, I, I would just chime in and no one is here from the conservation committee. I, I, I think one of the intentions of that prior work, which it's lovely to hear um, uh, your interest in re-engaging with it, uh, is to establish what's already available and what isn't. Um, and I, I think it would be perfectly reasonable to potentially link uh, to other resources that already exist or, or, or whatnot. I don't necessarily think we need to like copy it or duplicate it if it's already exists. Um, uh, and it maybe in that process, we'll identify things that don't yet exist if there is anything uh, that falls in that category that we can, you know, uh, focus new attention on maybe in collaboration with conservation or others. Um, but I, I think it would be lovely to uh, continue to improve our, our digital resources. But I'm also going to say that I, I think it's still interesting to consider physical signage as well, not because I want to tarnish our open space, uh, but because um, just as some people will look online for information, other people experience things in person. I, I mean, I can look at a map of our trails, but I can tell you I've run every single trail in Portola Valley on our maps, and it's different to experience it that way than to experience it on a map. Um, and, and so I'm not suggesting one or the other, I'm just suggesting we consider the possibility, that's all, consider the possibility of both improving our digital resources um, because it has obvious accessibility strengths, um, but also consider the possibility that there's a reason we put signs on other things we value around this town um, and that that we might consider the pros and cons, not just the cons of signing open space that we also value. That, that, that's the, the spirit of the suggestion. Nona? Yeah, I'd just like to bring this full circle a little bit and acknowledge that uh, Gary Nielsen is the person who started the description of Spring Down, which then went to conservation for some elaboration and actually, in some cases, some pruning. And, you know, at that time, I think the idea was that the two committees would collaborate with open space describing what the vision was for each parcel and conservation describing what the conservation needs or maintenance needs would be to achieve that long-term vision of what the property should represent. So I think it'd be wonderful to go back to, you know, maybe that partnership or some permutation of it, because it, I think it really does have potential. I don't think that the conservation descriptions are enough uh, in and of themselves because they don't really have the long-term vision. Um, the second thing I wanted to say is that I'm in support of signs at the properties, and this is something I, I thought this committee had discussed, but maybe it was only discussed in conservation where, for example, it'd be, I think it'd be wonderful to have a sign at Frog Pond saying, why is this called Frog Pond? <laughs> you know, where are the frogs? Um, come and listen. I, you know, where did this come from? Uh, I, I agree. I think signs sort of just increase your awareness when you're really right there. Thank you, Nona. Uh, Craig. So yeah, I would say this is not an either or. Um, everything Nona says is true. I mean, we we started this with 
we wanted a vision for each property um, and we wanted a maintenance plan for each property. We sort of divided it up. So in that sense, it, as a temporary measure, I think we could certainly link the conservation documents, but I don't think they're really what we want on the open space website. I mean, what we're trying to do on the open space website is say, here's why this is interesting, not here's what you need to do to maintain it for the next 20 years. So they're, they're really different documents. Um, so I think you can certainly lift a lot of stuff out of these documents, but they were kind of merger documents anyway. So I think we just need to take out the vision part and put it on our website. Um, I think we need to get Nona's map. I mean, we sort of COVID kind of stopped that because we we that we were all ready to go with that. I mean, I think we even budgeted that mailing. Um, so it's not that complicated. Um, and I can say after being a candidate, I actually know how to do bulk mailing now. So <laughs> we, we can we can actually get that. And and then in terms of signage, I mean, I think we need to pick and choose our signs. Um, we've clearly discussed for spring down. Um, one of the things we wanted to do was make it clear from the town center side that that was open space because a lot of people don't even realize that that's town property. And we had talked about putting a gate, you know, sort of like a ranch gate over one of the entrances just to make it more obvious. So I think there's room to do some of that. Um, I just think you need to be careful of, you know, how much you put. And I, I'm become a fan recently of stuff where maybe there's a title and, and I don't know if it's a QR code or something that then leads you back to a much richer experience. So, I mean, I think that, that we can end up doing both, but I, I, I do think it's really for kind of our major open spaces, that's appropriate. For some of the minor ones, a little less clear to me. Totally. I just want to say that I agree with uh, both Craig and Nona on the signage to identify the major open spaces. Okay. Uh, we have a few a number of years ago, we actually were thinking about uh, more aggressive signage at Dangler. I think, uh, Craig, you remember this. And not only the um, entrances, but also some of the features along the trail, such as uh, plants and that sort of thing. Um, it, we never went through with it. I don't think all of that's necessary, be, uh, but I think the signage at the entrance is, is a good one. Yeah, I think the nature trail thing got to be a little much. It, it was kind of, in, it, it was becoming a little invasive was my recollection, because we were going to have signposts all along and that really didn't seem like that fit our aesthetic whereas i agree with you i mean at an entrance it's it's, it's really a different thing it's like you know you're now entering this space uh one other thing uh, uh, christy brought it up about newcomers re uh receiving um the our, our brand new uh, information on open space and we used to do that i don't know if we still do Craig. it might be something you you could do in uh, next year to see if we still distribute um, the brochures, open space brochures to newcomers. Yeah, well, we used to have kind of a welcome wagon packet that you got when you moved into the town. You could come down to town center and pick it up. Exactly. But again, you know, there's there's a lot of stuff that's kind of gotten backed up behind COVID. So hopefully, yeah, we can sort of fix some of those community aspects. Well, I, I will chime in and acknowledge that we we looked at sending out that mailer. It is, by the way, posted on our website. Um, but just as we've discussed that some people look to the website, other people look to signs in real life or mail in their post office box and, you know, and, and sorts of that. So um, I think there's a lot of yes ands here from this conversation. Um, I, I recall that when we asked the town about the mailer, the feedback was, and so there's going to be a point to this. Uh, the town looked at our mailer and said, oh my gosh, it's like a threefold and it's not set up properly to, to mail in its current format, which I frankly was surprised about. But because Craig just mentioned that he's learned a lot about how to do mailers, Maybe um, 
uh, a few of us can put our heads together and revisit with the town what's possible because we did budget for this as well to get a version of the mailer physically out as well, not just digitally available. Um, even if it means there's a modest re-architecture of the current presentation, um, but with Craig's newfound insights um, and the, the caution or insights of, of uh, town staff, uh, maybe you know, we can figure out how to get this, uh, some version of this out. Um, does that sound plausible? I mean, I, I'm happy. I mean, I, I think Nona and I could get together. I could talk about what I've learned. I mean, I would say that once you get into three folds and you're put, stuffing envelopes, it's, you know, you, you raise the price considerably. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if we can do postcard, even if it's a very large postcard and we just move things around so there's enough room for an address, um, then at that point, I mean, it, it really is a pretty turnkey operation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the stuff I sent out, just to put it in context, I mean, to send out a postcard is about $1,300 to all the residents of the town. And we probably want to go up one more size. So mm -hmm. I, I would imagine you're still probably in the order of 15, certainly be well under $2,000 to send to everybody. And these printers know, I mean, you know, just because the political scene's over, they know exactly who to um, send it to. Okay. Um, I would warn you, it's not perfect. It doesn't guarantee that absolutely everybody gets it because the irony is one of the things that I sent out, I never got. So, <laughs> um, but that that's okay. I mean, it just means that, you know, the post office is a little sloppy when they're sorting their mail. Um, but I still think it would serve our purpose. Um, and, you know, I think we should probably be doing it every couple of years because, you know, people get these things, they put them in their refrigerator or in their drawer for a while and then new people move into town. So. You know, I don't think it hurts to do it every couple of years. I I just want to chime in. I love it. When I was listening to you talk, I realized we all get those almost eight and a half by 11 size real estate, yeah. uh, you know, cards almost. They're, they're not postcards, but they're supersized versions, which are glossy. And some of them were very alluring. Uh, I know our open space one will be very alluring. Uh, it'll be double side printed and, you know, and all that good stuff. And, and so this, when you framed it the way you just did, Craig, it actually set off light bulbs in my head. It was like, oh yeah, we should be able to do this. And it, it doesn't need to be painfully difficult to get out. And we do have budget for it. And that would be a nice, maybe that'd be a nice last hurrah, Craig, uh, for <laughs> you, at least for now on the open space committee um, to help us get that that uh, that out. Um, so I, I personally would love it if you would consider taking it up with Nona, who so carefully and thoughtfully helped create a beautiful uh, double sided doc. Um, and it's, it's ready to go if we have to modify it modestly to to fit the postal requirements. I, I'm sure we can figure out a way to do that. Yeah. Does that sound well, plausible? I'm just, I'm just under a month. So okay. <laughs> Nona, what do you think? I think that sounds great. Yeah, it, no, my memory is the same as yours, Terry, about where it kind of got yeah, stopped. Yeah. We almost got to the finish line yeah. <laughs> and then it got complicated and it, it kind of stopped us in our tracks. Do we need to make a motion to go follow up on that or can we just decide to do that? No, I think you're gonna to wanna to make a motion to spend the money, Okay. but but until we, you know, I, I'll talk with Nona, we can come back with something. I mean, if you want to do it before I leave the committee, you're going to have to schedule another meeting. But I'm guessing that I could work with Nona and we could get everything lined up. And you guys could either do a you know special meeting just to vote on it or just do it early January when you have your next meeting. Okay. I'm okay with that. Um, before we close this, I'll because Christy inspired this conversation, I'll take one last comment from Christy before we move on. Well, I think it's really important to do right away. And it's two years later, you know, I mean, Nona worked on it so long ago. And I remember two years ago, July, I believe. So why are we waiting? Are we waiting till after the housing 
stuff happens. I mean, we got to educate now where our open space is. Sorry, I really feel strongly about this. Thanks, Christy. But, Thanks. but we're, we're waiting to format it so we can nail it. Anyway, thank you. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, great, great discussion and great progress. Um, and I, I, I want to acknowledge that I felt like we discussed uh, the possibility, I'm going to put it this way, of, of uh, having a couple of people um, uh, maybe look at uh, signage as a yes and possibility, not just updating our online um, uh, information about open space, but also looking at um, uh, potential physical signage um, in an area. I don't know if we have, uh, I know Tissian had to drop, um, but uh, I don't know if we're ready to do it today, but I, I, I'm going to suggest at some point uh, a small subcommittee or task force uh, to do a little bit of homework um, on maybe the sites where it might be appropriate to consider physical signage of some sort. Um, uh, and I'm using the word signage very broadly, so don't don't get upset that some kind of signage is not appropriate and others might be more. Um, uh, and so that they can, you know, help do some work, some legwork uh, before coming back to the committee um, with some more specific suggestions about what parcels might be appropriate and maybe even what kind of signage might be appropriate. And again, signage could be a gate, it could be an actual sign or, or whatnot. So um, I just want to acknowledge that that feels like an, an opportunity that there seems to be some consensus on today. Um, but I don't know if we're ready to recommend a committee given we might want to get some more staffing uh, organized. Yeah, I think once I'm off, I think you guys are down to four, right? Which means your subcommittees are down to one. No, I think we're down to five. Okay, so you have a six person who's not here tonight? Yeah, we, uh, yeah, we have... Um, uh, Ward is a regular Ward. member. Ward is a regular member now. Oh, he, he, actually RS, okay. he, he actually RSVP'd, yes. Yeah, so okay, I'm, great. So, because he, he was sort of emeritus for a while. Okay, great. Was, but he became so, regular. So, that'll still let you have subcommittees of two. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to comment, as I did earlier, that the last item, thank you guys for the discussion. I found it very helpful and encouraging. And thank you, Nona and Craig, for following up on, on the mailer. Appreciate it. Um, I'm going to acknowledge that 5D, as I already said, I feel is really part of 5B. Um, and so uh, uh, I think there is some runway to talk about it, um, but I'm not sure that um, uh, it's really, it is obviously a high profile situation, but not one that I don't, I, unless there's any comments that people want to share tonight about it, but I think it's part of a larger project. Um, that might go through housing more than, or planning more than this particular committee. Um, but Rita, you raised your hand. I'm happy to hear if you have something to say about it. Uh, yeah, you know, I've seen it on maps different um, with different names. I, I thought uh, Ford Field is the baseball field and Dorothy Ford Park is that side area with the big trees. And so there seems to be a lot of confusion on some of the town maps um, in, for housing and for, um, you know, even for this discussion, because uh, as part of the housing element, they are talking about possibly moving the field, the, the field itself, paying off the loan and dealing with the state on that. And, and so people are, are using Dorothy Ford Park and Dorothy Ford Field interchangeably and, um, you know, Hopefully, at least with this group, it can it can get a little cleaned up so people know what they're talking about, not the field that's associated with the loan that was taken out like 12 years ago that we'd have to pay back if we'd had to do anything. And there's some restrictions on the field or the park and how it pertains to that little piece of the park that Ladera Oaks rents and just renewed their lease on that part. You know, so it's, there's a lot. 
so uh, if that could be cleared up by this group, it's one of the reasons why I, I, I joined tonight after my um, Hidden Villa meeting. But um, thank you when I saw this on there. And it's just like, it's not just my pet peeve, but just some clarity will probably really help the community when that piece of land is being discussed. Thank you. Thank you for raising that, Rita. And I want to apologize to my colleagues in the community. I should have been more careful about the way that got listed on the uh, agenda. Um, clearly meant to say Dorothy Ford Park or open space, not field. But um, thank you for pointing that out. Um, Christy? Yeah, I was not able to raise my hand earlier, and now it looks like I can. So uh, not sure why that is under. Um, Anyway, uh, the article from the Almanac says Dorothy Ford Field. Okay, it's in the Almanac, uh, dated. So that that's confusing to probably the Little League players because they are now looking at Ford Field in the picture. <laughs> it says Ford Field 3399 Alpine Road one of the proposed sites for housing development over the next eight years. On Alpine Road in 2013, and that's an older picture, but they're showing the baseball field. And they're calling it Dorothy Ford Field. So I do think that this committee has an obligation to separate the two and be clear on what is happening and work with the housing, the planners, Laura Russell on, we only want one thing said for Dorothy Ford Park and we want it said this way because Dorothy Ford Park open space is still labeled that, correct? What is on your map, Nona, for that area? I'm just curious what's on the map because that would be official. I think what we should do is reference the town list first, um, because the town list that Terry had is, I think, what we used on the open space map, but I can bring up the open space map. Yeah, I'm curious. So this is why people are getting so confused. Great. Christy, did you have any other comments or questions? Um, no, thank you. Thank you. Craig, did you have a comment or question? Sure. I mean, I think I can speak directly to this as a member of the planning commission. So I'll be your planning commission liaison tonight. Um, so this confusion, um, I, I can guess I can take the blame for is intentional. Um, when they were looking at putting housing on the open space, Nicholas and I created a larger zoning area, which included the little piece of Ladera Church, the open space, and the field to give us more flexibility in the next two years to try to resolve this. Because it was clear if we just said, oh, well, we'll put it on the baseball field, that all the sports people would freak out. And if we put it on the open space, the open space would freak out. And so what we're trying to do is buy us some time to either A, see if we could find an alternate site, which would be the best thing all around. And if it's not, then there have been discussions about potentially putting underground parking and continuing to leave the baseball field there. But if we put underground parking, there may be room to fit the housing with the field and still keep the open space. So I think the answer is we don't know. And uh, I would say that the confusion at the moment was sort of intentional to give us, to buy us some time to sort out the issues. Because otherwise, if we just said, well, it's gonna be Dorothy Ford open space, then that would sort of be a done deal. And that was not the goal. The goal was actually to try to avoid that if we could. So it's it, it's a little bit more complicated than let's clarify this stuff. Because the, the zone, um, the property, I think, was bought as one parcel when, when it was originally per, per, purchased. I don't think that's separated out. Um, we, sep we, the town, separated it out into the two pieces. So... So anyway, that's that's kind of my current sense of why that confusion exists. So I agree with you. I think in some ways it's unfortunate, but I would also say in some ways it's what's giving us the breathing room to try to find a better solution. 
but we're not seeing the sub the sunrise uh, subcommittee working on finding other sites. And it seems to me this committee could write a letter saying, where's the committee looking for more sites where we have an ADU committee, but that sunrise committee is non-existent as far as I can see. So are you volunteering? Well, I, I think it should be a planner. It should be on the planner's agenda and we should be pushing that along to try to save Dorothy Ford Park. I mean, if, if we're doing a sunrise and we have two years to do it, where's the work starting? Yeah, I, sure. I have called an architect and I had him look at and I do have a new list of other sites. So yes, Good. I will be writing that letter. Good, that's that's the right thing to do. Because yeah, the, the reality is we don't even have an approved housing plan yet. So that's still- Well, I heard her say the other night that, hey, it looks like all our sites are great and we just need to work on some wording. And I went, wow, okay. So maybe Sunrise went away. No, no, that, and it's Feels not- like it. I mean, I don't want to get in too much back and forth, but, but we said, have to protect it. That that is this committee to protect it. So, can we write a letter and say, you know, we still expect you to look for other locations? I, and I think what would be better, Christy, is if you could work with this committee with your list of alternatives to have this committee make a proposal to alternatives to Dorothy Ford Park. I mean, that, that would be the appropriate thing. I mean, I think everybody would prefer not to use Dorothy Ford Park if possible. I don't, I don't know of anybody who says this is a great idea. I think this was the least worst idea in the minds of some people. So well, if, if we had bought, uh, my idea is to uh, have a realtor on board and know when lot, lots are being sold and we should have had, you know, the parcels right next to um, Roberts, right? Like okay, so again, I, without going into the details, I, my suggestion would be work this, would be a good thing to work with this committee on. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to work for open space. So. Yeah, so I, I would say write up your comments and present them to this committee. That'd be great, thank you. Um, thank you both for the conversation. Let's see. Betsy, you had your hand raised. Yes, um, just a small add-on to the conversation I've just been listening to is it might possibly um, feed back into the postcard mailing um, a vision and, and naming. Um, I understand, so, so as you have recorded, uh, Ford Field and Dorothy Ford Park collectively are 7.67 6, acres. In the conversation with our um, town planner, Laura, um, I brought up a uh, 2.48 acres, which has been written and recorded in a few places recently, apropos of Dorothy Ford Park. And when I used that to back into what I thought were the, was the municipal code creek setback, she said, well, you know, actually that number, we would need to do a survey to even arrive at the appropriate number because we've never surveyed the parcels separately. So, so she said it could well be more than 2.48 acres, which is an important consideration because the creek setback is, would, be, would grow if it reaches 2.5 acres. So I mentioned that in context of this conversation because it could impact how we're visioning um, Dorothy, Dorothy Ford Park in some way, shape or form in what postcard you're going to mail. I don't know how you're gonna finesse um, Dorothy Ford in that open space education program. Thank, Thank you. you. Nona, did you have uh, a comment? Yeah, just really briefly, since the question came up, the map says Dorothy Ford Park and open space, and it references the 7.67 acres, including the baseball field. And so I think we did that for <laughs> sort of the, um, exact opposite reason <laughs> that Craig was saying um, for uh, sort of merging the names is that we wanted to like claim the name for the whole parcel, um, but including the baseball field. So there you go. Um, right, thank you. Good conversation. Um, 
and I, I guess I would echo what Craig suggested. If Christy, you have some additional suggestions um, that you can simplify, clarify, and send in, we we'd be happy to see them. So thank you for that. Um, I want to thank you guys for that conversation and actually for all the conversations tonight. Betsy, your hand's still raised, but I think that we already covered yeah, what you wanted to raise. Um, I, I think that's our agenda. Uh, I really appreciate all the input uh, that you all provided. I think we've made some small steps in positive directions, uh, whether it be uh, uh, a naming or a meeting schedule or um, looking at uh, getting the mailer out uh, and maybe even updating and cleaning up some of the website uh, that Tissian made reference to earlier. So thank you guys for um, for your attention to these and all these matters. Um, I don't know if this is going to be our last meeting of the year if we adopt this new every other month thing. Um, but I wanted to close and recommend that we adjourn by um, saying thank you again. And I hope you guys have a, a safe uh, and a joyful holiday season as well. Um, if there are any other comments, I'd, I'd make a motion to adjourn. I mean, I just have one comment, which has been nice working with you guys. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Craig, likewise. Do I have a second? I'll second that as my last action. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All those in favor? Uh, uh, right. um, thank you, Rita, Betsy, and Christy as well. Um, uh, thank you always for your care and interest in your input. Um, much more work ahead. Um, and Especially if you're Craig Taylor. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Craig. Yeah. Have thank you, everybody. Evening, everyone. Good night. And Terry, will you be in touch? I most certainly will. Okay, great. Thank, thank you, you, Betsy. Bye. And okay. Nona? When, yeah. when's a good when's a good time to catch up uh soon yeah let's let's talk about it soon what's good for you um well we could do something now or i can call you sometime tomorrow how about tomorrow okay what should we pick a time real quick yeah uh how about morning is morning okay generally it should be let me just check um Yes, I've got a couple of things in the afternoon. So it's like nine o'clock work, nine or 10. What's? Uh, 10. 10 o'clock. 10 would be great. Yeah. Great. So how about I just give you a call? I think most of it, we could probably just chat on the phone. I, I don't, you know, it's going to be, I think, a fairly quick conversation because I can just kind of tell you the general kind of outline and maybe um, we can just, I can send a Zoom link or something and we can look at the um, map and the other stuff and figure out if we were trying to make it two-sided, what, what would we put on what side? It would be is basically, I think the real conversation, because um, other than that, all you need is you just need a little box to basically or put- Or an address name. label. Y yeah, that, well, it, it's the address and it's the yeah. sort of little postage, yeah. you know, bug or whatever they call that thing. Uh, and that's okay. really all you need. And the rest is, I mean, we generate a PDF and the printer looks at it and he sends back a PDF saying, you know, here's how it's going to look when it's printed with the little cut marks and you just give him a credit card and it's gone. So, okay. So I think that's, I mean, so, so if you want to take a look at what you got, I mean, we could talk tomorrow about, you know, how it might make sense to turn it into a flat two pager. Okay, so I guess one question, I'll take a look at it before 10 tomorrow. Um, right now it's eight and a half by 11. Are, are we thinking we would scale that down or? I mean, I'll try to call, I'll see if I can get a hold of the guy in the morning and see, you know, kind of what the sizes are. I mean, okay. I got the guy's contact information. So I'll try to make that call before 10 um, and see, because I think if we made it too much smaller, it would be kind of hard to see it's what's there. Read. I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I agree. So, I mean, maybe we scale it down to, you know, seven by nine or something. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'll I'll check with them and see what the size options are. Okay. Um, 
Because I think the things we were sending out for the election, um, five by seven, maybe, maybe even bigger. They might have been bigger than that. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll call them. I'll call them in the morning. I'll, I'll get us some size. Because there's there's a sweet spot, which whatever those things we were sending out, that was in the sweet spot. So I don't know what the additional costs are, but I agree. I mean, unless it's like quadruple or something, I think having it be larger is better just because it makes the map more accessible. Okay, sounds okay. good. Cool. Thank you. And the yeah. other thing is we may have to find some more art, you know, to, if we're going to put stuff on the other side. But I think we have a bunch of that stuff around, don't we? Well, so what we had talked about originally was the flyer on one side and the map on the other. Right, so that's okay. that takes up all of the real estate right there. But we might, so we'll have to remove something to have a mailing label and the postal code and that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. But, okay, perfect. All right, we'll talk tomorrow. Okay, thank Take you. Take care. Bye. Yeah, you too. Bye. I'm going to miss you on this <laughs> committee. This, yeah. this committee will not be the same. Well, I'll still be in town. You know, the one thing I've been encouraging people is taking on this new role more than ever. I need people to actually reach out and say, hey, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> because, you know, it's as I found during this campaign, it's kind of a one way street. You know, you push all this stuff out, but you have no idea what the real response is, you know, because we don't have polling or anything. So it's a weird one way exercise. Mm. So I would look forward to your continued, like, please don't hesitate to reach out with positive or negative, you know, comments, <laughs> okay. of, you know, because it, it really helps me do a better job. Fair enough. Thank okay. you. And I'll miss you as well. So that's what I'm saying. Keep reaching out. Okay. All right. Thank Take you. Care. Yeah. Talk to you tomorrow. Yeah.